Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to run Android Studio 3.13 and on an AMD Ryzen computer and get the emulator just to run just as fast as it would on an Intel machine. So here I've got Android Studio 3.13. I've got my emulator running and I'm going to demonstrate this for you real quick. Why this is loading um, I'll explain why this has been important. So until now you've had to use a real device uh, or the emulator has been extremely slow um, but having an em emulator working is so nice. Um, so this is just a little sample app. I'm currently doing my Android um, Nano degree from Udacity uh, and I came across how to do this and I wanted to share it with everybody. This is just an app that uh, I had to create with, uh, with it. But as you can see it's running very smooth. Um, this is with Recycler View. Runs very, very well. Um, all right, let's stop that there. So uh, to get this going, um, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to go through a couple steps. Uh, I'll include these in the link at the bottom uh, when I'm all done with everything so you can know how to do this step by step. Um, but there is some requirements. It's not going to be for everybody. Um, and where this came about was uh, XDA developers announced recently that Android Canary, which is a beta build, um, or actually an alpha build, uh, of Android Studio uh, 3.6 brings the emulator to, An uh, to AMD. Um, there is some hoops you got to jump through to get this and we'll cover them very briefly. Um, there's a lot of different scenarios that are going to happen with your individual motherboard preferences, things like that, so this may or may not work for you. Um, and there's some um, things I need to talk about of possible uh, issues with this as well. It worked perfect for me, so I hope it does the same for you. Uh, first thing you need to do is go to the Android Studio Preview, download the Canary build. Uh, Canary will download in a separate location, which is nice to use. Uh, it do, will not copy over your current build, um, so you don't. You can run these two together at the same time, even in two different um, two different applications if you wanted to. Um, I downloaded this, ran it. Uh, I did run into some issues with uh, Glide running. Uh, the Glide library wouldn't work, so I rolled back. I loaded up my 3.13 again and I had forgotten to close the emulator and come to find out the emulator that's updated to the Canary build will still run on this version, uh, which is just fantastic. So um, the requirements here, um, you do need to have, uh, let's see, let's pull this back up here. Uh, you do need to get Hyper-V um, running. Um, Hyper-V is a... Uh, virtual machine technology for Windows. Um, so this, as you can tell, just recently came out here. Um, and the way you get this set up is there's a couple different steps. Um, you do need to make a change in the BIOS to enable virtualization uh, and then turn on some features. So I'm going to just briefly go over some of this stuff. Um, the first thing I would do um, if I wasn't familiar with the kind of motherboard you have um, is to go in and do dxdiag which is just DirectX Diagnostics. Um, what this will open is it will bring up your diagnostics window. It'll tell you just some basic things, what your build number is, um, what your you know what your motherboard is, things like that, and then kind of go from there. For example, I've got a th uh, MSI 370 Carbon. Um, so when you go into the 370 Carbon's um, bio screen, you need to go into the um, computer changes under advanced, uh, and you're going to look for things called uh, SWM, virtualization, AMDV. It could be a whole bunch of different uh, different names, um, but you need to enable that. Um, now, this is where the first word of caution comes in. I've read on some forums that on uh, some laptops that have AMD Ryzen processors, um, you can run into some serious problems enabling this virtualization. I have no idea why. Um, Intel, or excuse me, um, Microsoft even has some uh, uh, comments about this. Uh, they're not exactly sure why it's doing it as well. Um, it still is in a very early version of, uh, of this for Windows 10, I guess. Um, so they're just, you know, making sure that they that everybody knows there could be some issues with this. Um, so if you run into issues with the system bricking or you can't get, you know, back into Windows. Uh, or even in your BIOS, make sure you know how to reset your BIOS if necessary. Uh, like I said, it works just fine for me, but other people it may or may not. Um, so once you get that installed, 
uh, and you go there, uh, you go to install Hyper-V on Windows. Uh, the easiest way to do this um, is through the settings, in my opinion. Um, and you can just type, turn Windows features on and off. And that'll bring up this little window here. And you'll need to enable all the Hyper-V menus shown here. And then also Hypervisor Platform. Uh, it'll ask you to reboot and it'll install these features. Uh, when you come back up uh, and it's running, uh, you'll have it. And so long as you've installed everything else, you should be able to run this just fine like I did here. Um, it runs incredibly smooth. Um, I mean, not as good as a, you know, a separate device, of course, but I've had really good luck with this. I haven't had, I haven't experienced any problems. Um, I'm just super happy that finally we're able to use this. Um, feel free to put some questions on the bottom. I'll try to answer anybody's questions. You know, I'll try to help anybody out that I can. Um, I'm not an expert on this. Um, I'm pretty good with PCs, but I'm not the best. So um, hope this helps a bunch of people. Uh, have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.